in numbers this morning. I think uh, I know of several people who are out of town with their families. And I also know of uh, a couple of people who are not feeling well this morning, so they're not able to be here. But I want to welcome those of us that are here, are here and uh, especially I want to welcome back Ken Bell and uh, also the uh, friends and family of Carolyn Mason as well. Good to have you all here. Um, I'd, I'd like to thank Carolyn, Carolyn and Patty Christmas for all of their efforts in decorating the church this week. Um, I remember how nicely it was decorated last year. I know this is an annual thing that Carolyn and Patty and others do, but it always is very, very, very nice. And, uh, and then as, as well as the inside of the church being decorated for the 4th of July, uh, also the outside, as you can see when you walk in, has been uh, decorated with American flags, and Herb McCulloch is the one to thank for that. So thanks to um, all of you. I may have missed someone that I'm not aware of who helped in the decorations for the 4th of July. But uh, later on, we will uh, have as our offertory anthem um, a very stirring song that talks about uh, God bless the USA. So um, if you'll just remain seated, we will uh, hear uh, a collage of American folk songs that Mikey has put together, and then we will uh, stand for the opening hymn. Thank you. 
Scriptures continues on page one of your worship book. <clears throat> Hallelujah, the Lord is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <laughs> And would 
wave his hand over the spot and cure the leprosy. Are not Habana and Barker, the rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel? Could I not wash in them and be clean? He turned and went away in a rage. But his servants approached and said to him, Father, if the prophet had commanded you to do something difficult, would you not have done it? How much more when all he said to you was wash and be clean? So he went down and immersed himself seven times in the Jordan, according to the word of the man of God. His flesh was restored like the flesh of a young boy, and he was clean. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Let us read responsibly Psalm 30, responding at the half verse. I will exalt you, O Lord, because you have lifted me up. And have not let my enemies triumph over me. O Lord, my God, I cried out to you. And you restored me to health. You brought me up, O Lord, from the dead. You restored my life as I was going down to the grave. Sing to the Lord, you servants of his. Give thanks for the remembrance of his holiness. For his wrath endures but the twinkling of an eye. His favor for a lifetime. Weeping may spend the night. But joy comes in the morning. While I felt secure, I said, I shall never be disturbed. You, Lord, with your favor, made me as strong as the mountains. And then you hid your face. And I was filled with fear. I cried to you, O Lord. I pleaded with the Lord, saying, What profit is there in my blood if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you or declare your faithfulness? Hear, O Lord, and have mercy upon me. O Lord, be my helper. You have turned my wailing into dancing. You have put off my sackcloth and clothed me with joy. Therefore, my heart sings to you without ceasing. O Lord, my God, I will give you thanks forever. A reading from Paul's letter to the Galatians. My friends, if anyone is detected in a transgression, you who have received the Spirit should restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness. Take care that you yourselves are not tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. For if those who are nothing think they are something, they deceive themselves. All must test their own work. Then that work, rather than their neighbor's work, will become a cause for pride. For all must carry their own loads. Those who are taught the word must share in all good things with their teacher. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For you reap whatever you sow. If you sow to your own flesh, you will reap corruption from the flesh. But if you sow to the Spirit, you will reap eternal life from the Spirit. So let us not grow weary in doing what is right, for we will reap at harvest time if we do not give up. So then, whenever we have an opportunity, let us work for the good of all, and especially for those of the family of faith. See what large letters I make when I am writing in my own hand. It is those who want to make a good showing in the flesh that try to compel you to be circumcised, only that they may not be persecuted for the cross of Christ. Even the circumcised do not themselves obey the law, but they want you to be circumcised so that they may boast about your flesh. May I never boast of anything except the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by which the world has been crucified to me, and I to the world. For neither circumcision nor uncircumcision is anything, but a new creation is everything. As for those who will follow this rule, peace be upon them, and mercy, and upon the Israel of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Let us stand and sing hymn number 441. In the cross of Christ, I glory.
Christ according to Luke. The Lord appointed 70 others and sent them on ahead of him in pairs to every town and place where he himself intended to go. He said to them, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go on your way. See, I am sending you out like lambs into the midst of wolves. Carry no purse, no bag, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say, Peace to this house. And if anyone is there who shares in peace, your peace will rest on that person. But if not, it will return to you. Remain in the same house, eating and drinking whatever they provide, for the laborer deserves to be paid. Do not move about from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and its people welcome you, eat what is set before you. Cure the sick who are there and say to them, The kingdom of God has come near to you. But whenever you enter a town and they do not welcome you, Go out into its streets and say, Even the dust of your town that clings to our feet, we wipe off in protest against you. Yet, know this, the kingdom of God has come near. Whoever listens to you listens to me, and whoever rejects you rejects me, and whoever rejects me rejects the one who sent me. Now the seventy returned with joy, saying, Lord, in your name, even the demons submit to us. He said to them, I watched Satan fall from heaven like a flash of lightning. See, I have given you authority to tread on snakes and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing will hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice at this. That the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord God. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be always found acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. We'll give the choir just a second or so to come down and be seated here in the front. Well, this morning, I'd like to preach on the gospel, but before I do that, I do want to say a word or two about this very interesting passage. It comes to us from the second book of Kings. And it's the story of um, one of the uh, generals of a king named Aram. Hence, we get the word Arameans from this king. And he had this general who, whose name was Naaman. And Naaman had done the king of Aram a great, great service and performed many military victories but suffered from leprosy. And so he went to a prophet, one of the major prophets of Israel, in order to seek healing from his leprosy. It's a wonderful story and has many layers to it, but one of the things that we need to remember is it's an instance in the Hebrew scriptures from the second book of Kings where someone from outside of the Jewish faith seeks healing from a great prophet who is obviously a part, very much a part, of the Jewish faith. Fascinating kind of text. But I want to preach on the gospel passage, which really and truly does not have an awful lot to do with that first reading from the second book of Kings. This is a gospel from Luke's gospel, a passage from Luke's gospel, and it's only contained in Luke's gospel. 
It's not in Matthew's Gospel or Mark's Gospel or John's Gospel. But we all know about this. Jesus has a kind of second wave of disciples that he sends out as uh, missionaries, if you will, to kind of prepare the soil and the ground for when he himself would visit people in these towns. Now this is all within the kingdom of Israel, and the 70 go out without any training. They're not the apostles, they're not the 12 apostles, they're others. But whoever they are, they have not been to seminary. <laughs> I don't know how they were selected. I don't even know if they were selected. They could have just been a random group of 70 volunteers who said, yes, I've got the time. My vacation is coming up and I can use vacation time to go out and do what you want us to do, Jesus. And what Jesus tells them to do is not to teach doctrine, but just simply to be with people in these various villages. We don't know how large each village might have been, but I'm sure there weren't great cities. But when they went to the villages, they were to establish rapport with people who were open to the message of love, to the message of new life. And the only way that they could do that was not by telling them about all of the dogmas and doctrines of, first of all, the Jewish faith, which are contained in the book of Leviticus, but also any of the doctrines and dogmas of what it's like to follow Jesus. They had to be with these people so that in the words of Henri Nouwen, the Jesus in them reached out to the Jesus in these people in these small villages and towns. You follow what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Evangelism, the spreading of the good news, which is really what evangelism is all about, begins with 70 people who possessed not, perhaps not great intellectual capabilities, but who were transformed themselves, who had something within them that amplified and manifested the spirit of Jesus. So in order to be a good evangelist, you need not know doctrine or dogma, nor do you need to be able to cite by verse and chapter various passages from scripture, but you do need to be transformed. And the way that the good news works is that when one is transformed and begins just by his or her presence to talk about the good news of God in Christ, that spirit somehow is transmitted and received by the other. Now, the text is very interesting on this point. Not all of the others are open to receiving that spirit. In other words, when the 70 are sent out, what Jesus says is to them, you are to greet people by saying, peace be with you. Another way of saying that is, do you experience the presence of God in your life? If you're only in this life for self-centered reasons, if you're only in it for ego, then in all probability you're not going to be able to respond to the 70. 
And that's just the way it works. In order for the gospel to be spread, it's a two-party system, if you will. First of all, the disciples, the 70, as well as the early apostles, all have to be taken up with the Spirit of Christ. But not only that, the people to whom they are sent also have to have some, at least some desire within their souls to be taken up with the Spirit of the living God. And therein lies new life. Therein lies harmony. Therein lies what the text says is peace. Shalom. Wholeness of life. That's what the kingdom of heaven builds upon. It's like a another... Um, it's like... Have you ever seen the movie The Matrix? It's a very complex movie and hard to understand until years later after you see it when you realize that we live in different matrices. I think that's the plural of matrix. And what Jesus is revealing to us is a way of living that is a wonderful matrix in which to live. We can choose not to live there at our own peril. But if we do choose to live in the matrix of the kingdom of heaven, even the demons submit to us. I mean, those 70 testified with great surprise when they returned back to Jesus. How probably rather simple it was to enter into a realm and a way of being that was utterly fulfilling. So fulfilling that even their fears of the demonic were gone, were dissipated. Do you hear what I'm saying? We enter into um, the mystical, the matrix of the kingdom of heaven. <coughs> Now, in evangelistic terms, the gospel is not spread by buttonholing William Christmas and saying, Sir, I have pamphlets on my personhood that you need to read and read immediately before you get sick and die. <laughs> that as you can tell, is not the way to spread the good news of God. It is not that way, but it's not simple either. Because evangelism begins with us. It begins with our lives being transformed, does it not, Patty? Then, it moves. Evangelism is not enough if we just encounter someone who is that holy person of God that we aspire to be like and we aspire to be with. We move from being to belonging. Now, when I talk about belonging, I'm talking about the absolute necessity to be with others of a similar spirit. Others who are in that matrix, if you will, of the kingdom of heaven. And it's absolutely necessary for our growth and I might add for their growth as well. So if being is the first step of good evangelism. Then belonging is... Now that doesn't mean that we need to belong to a huge cathedral, nor even to an institutionalized religion, I might add. But it does mean 
being with people who themselves realize the power of Christ. I want to share something with you. My greatest experience with Christianity did not occur within the context of a parish setting. <clears throat> My greatest experience of Christianity came years ago when I first met Laura in a house church. It was a, a community called the Community of Christ in Washington, D.C., made up of, at best, 60 people. And even among those 60 people, we kind of broke down into smaller groups of people so that we came to know and to love those people in our smaller group. We had a Monday night group, a Tuesday night group, a Wednesday night group. Laura and I belonged to the largest of all, the Thursday night group, which probably had 20 people in it. It was an amazing experience. Powerful. Because we brought to those cell group meetings not only our bodies, but our souls. And we shared with one another not only our joys, but we share our sufferings and our pain. And we felt the Spirit. It was not a part of what we would know of as the charismatic movement, but it was certainly ecumenical. There were people in that community of Christ in Washington, D.C., that came from all different facets of Christian denominations. And for the most part, I must add, they had been wounded by their denomination. So they sought the Spirit. They did not give up in their quest for Jesus. And they moved beyond all of the superficialities of religion into a deeper sense of spirituality. That's not to say that we can't find God within the context of a more formalized denomination. But it is to say that in my experience, that one-on-one -on -one brought to me a sense of belonging, a sense of really knowing, from the inside out that's been unmatched ever since. Remarkable experience. I'm sure it's a little bit like what the apostles must have experienced, especially in the upper room. Just the powerful presence of the living God and sharing it with other people whom you would trust with your life. I mean with your life. So the first step of evangelism is being. And the second step is belonging. And it's only after that that you begin to formulate how do we belong with one another. All of the doctrines and the dogmas and the, and the artifacts of Christianity are really in third place when it comes to the essence of Christianity. It was um, of great concern that part of our uh, covenant with one another in this house church did not talk about certainly the superiority of one denomination over the other. That was never even a matter for discussion we bypass that altogether. And what was important in terms of how we were to form ourselves as a body of Christ, as a community of Christ, what became important was, do we spend money on church buildings? Or do we use that money in a different way? And what the community of Christ came up with was that they wanted 
to only meet in people's houses and not get involved in the real estate business. And instead of that, the second thing that they had as part of their framework was to spend 50% of their total budget on outreach and 50% of their total budget on their own needs, whatever they may be. Now, it wasn't a great deal of money, but 50% going to outreach was a significant step. It was a step of belief on everyone's part. And furthermore, and this was where it got very interesting, this community, small in nature, took from the in-reach budget, the 50% that went towards the needs of sustaining the community of Christ, and they set aside 10% of that money for what they call the dream fund. And anyone within the community of Christ could go before the body of the rest of the people and say, I have a dream. So when I was there and when Laurel was there, we had two things that resulted as a part of the dream fund. The first was um, a Christian art and bookstore in the DuPont Circle area of Washington. If you know Washington at all, you know um, a Christian art and bookstore was badly needed in the DuPont Circle area of Washington. And it was marvelous. Um, the fellow who got all of this started was a Lutheran pastor. He actually had a full-time job with Lutheran social services so he didn't require a salary to be the head of the community of Christ. But he also loved to go to this Christian art and bookstore and just hang out. There was always a pot of coffee and he might be reading or smoking his pipe and someone would inevitably come in from off the street and have some kind of of a pressing matter on their mind. And they just talk. I don't know if they ever resolve the pressing matter or not, but it was the presence of Christ that was all important. The second um, outreach that emerged from the Dream Fund <coughs> was uh, brought up by a woman who had a green thumb. And lo and behold, about six or seven other members of the community of Christ had a green thumb as well. And her dream was to found a plant shop that would not only sell plants to the residents of DuPont Circle for reasonable prices, but even more importantly, take in wounded and dying plants from people who lived in the neighborhood and nurse those plants back to life. We called that the third day. You know why? On the third day, God created what, Carolyn? The plants. It was a wonderful expression of the uh, vitality and the life of a Christian community. And it was done with, I think, just a little bit more than a handful of people. It was powerful, life transforming. So being is the first part. Belonging is the second part of evangelism. And it's only after that that we really get to the structured beliefs. What is it that we hold most dear? All of the doctrines that have grown out of organized religion 
can quickly dissolve into something that bears little shape to what Jesus, I, I think, initially had in mind for Christianity. Think about how many uh, hours were spent in the Middle Ages discussing with fervence how many angels could fit on the head of a pin. It has nothing to do with Christianity. You agree? Yeah. That's what it was at stake in the early years of Christianity. Transforming people's lives. One on one. Group upon group. That's the vision that Jesus has for all of us, for the world. The scriptures clearly point out that that can happen across cultural lines as well. The story of Naaman being healed by a Jewish prophet is an illustration of that in today's readings. The good news of God in Christ is universal, and it begins with us, one on one. So the next time we want to spread the good news of God, we need to begin with ourselves. And we need to enter into that matrix, which we call the kingdom of heaven. May God be with you. I know you know what I'm talking about. And that feels very good. Amen. Amen. Let us stand and say aloud together the nice and free, found on page nine. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and our salvation, he came down from heaven, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and was the man. For our sake he was crucified by the conscious power. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life. It proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, He is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Please be seated or kneel as you are able for the prayers. <laughs> Friends, let us not grow weary in doing what is right. Let us appeal to God, who is our strength, praying, Hear, O Lord, and have mercy upon us. We ask you, O Lord of the harvest, to send out laborers into your harvest. Grant us the grace of your Holy Spirit that your Christ might freely proclaim in word and deed the good news of your King. Hear, O Lord, and have mercy upon us. Give us, O God, the opportunity and the will to work for the good of all. Give us hearts for the people you love. Hear, O Lord, and have mercy upon us. We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water 
In it, man was cleansed from his disease. By it, the whole earth is refreshed. Through it, we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Hear us, O Lord. And have mercy upon us. Gracious God, we thank you for our freedom. May we use it to bear one another's burdens and to live in peace. We offer thanksgivings for our presiding Bishop Michael, our Bishop Susan, our, and our Rector John, and for those celebrating their birthday, especially David, Nicholas, Gerald, Father John, and those celebrating their wedding anniversaries, especially Bill and Barbara. I invite you to add your own thanksgivings at this time. Our family. Rest in your own. Hear, O Lord. And have mercy upon us. O Lord, our helper, you turn wailing into dancing. You dress your children in joy. We pray that you would restore to health all those who cry out to you, especially Molly, Earl, Derek, Ken and Mary Lynn, Rick and Cree, Kaylee, Dick, Torsten, Tony, Pat, Storm, Christine, Devin, Katie, Vicki, Linda, Paula, Jay, Nicole, Sharon, Barbara, Karen, Colleen, Cindy, Tom, Catherine, Savannah, Roger, Gwen, and Bill and Barbara. We pray for the people of Ukraine and Russia who through no, through no fault of their own are caught in the throes of war. I invite you to add your own petitions at this time. For Gina and Cameron. Hear, O oh Lord, and have mercy on us. Holy God, it is our joy that you write our names in heaven. In the fullness of time, raise us with all the saints to eternal life, that we may give you thanks forever. Hear, O Lord, and have and mercy, mercy upon us. Almighty God, who has given us this good land for our heritage, we humbly beseech thee that we may always prove ourselves a people mindful of thy favor and glad to do thy will. Bless our land with honorable industry, sound learning, and pure manners. Save us from violence, discord, and confusion, from pride and arrogance, and from every evil way. Defend our liberties and fashion into one united people the multitudes brought hither out of many kindreds and tongues. And do with the spirit of wisdom those to whom in thy name we entrust the authority of government, that there may be justice and peace at home, and that through obedience to thy law, we may show forth thy praise among the nations of the earth. In the time of prosperity, fill our hearts with thankfulness, and in the day of trouble, suffer not our trust in thee to fail all of which we ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> remaining kneeling, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. <clears throat> Most merciful God, God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, thought word, and deed, by, by what we have done, done and by, by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we come to them. For the sake of our Savior Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us. 
that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Yeah, he's still pretty sore. Forgive me, please. I love you. I, I, I'm at the point where I don't know you anymore. I don't either. So it could be interesting for you. Peace. Bring offerings and enter into God's courts with praise and thanksgiving.
service continues with the Eucharistic prayer found on page 15 of your worship bulletin. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. We praise you and we bless you, holy and gracious God, source of life abundant. From before time you made ready the creation. Your spirit moved over the deep and brought all things into being. Sun, moon, and stars, earth, winds, and waters, and every living thing. You made us in your image and taught us to walk in your ways. But we rebelled against you and wandered far away. And yet, as a mother cares for her children, you would not forget us. Time and again you called us to live in the fullness of your love. And so this day we join with saints and angels in the chorus of praise that rings through eternity, lifting our voices to magnify you as we sing. <laughs> of your grace, you looked with favor upon Mary, your willing servant, that she might conceive and bear a son, Jesus, the holy child of God. Living among us, Jesus loved us. He broke bread with outcasts and sinners, healed the sick and proclaimed good news to the poor. He yearned to draw all the world to himself. Yet we were heedless of his call to walk in love. Then the time came for him to complete upon the cross the sacrifice of his life and to be glorified by you. On the night before he died for us, Jesus was at table with his friends. <clears throat> he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke it and gave it to them and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine. Again, he gave thanks to you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Now gathered at your table, O God of all creation, and remembering Christ crucified and risen, who was and is and is to come, we offer to you our gifts of bread and wine, and ourselves a living sacrifice. Pour out your Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the body and blood of Christ. Breathe your Spirit over the whole earth, and make us your new creation, the body of Christ given for the world you have made. In the fullness of time, bring us with Michael and all your saints from every tribe and language and people and nation to feast at the banquet prepared from the foundation of the world. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. 
our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and glory are yours, now and forever. Hallelujah, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep peace. Hallelujah. My sisters and brothers, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Amen. Release the body of Christ, the bread of blood of Christ, the cup of salvation.
glorious things of thee are spoken. <clears throat> Sunday's collection. Two people are required each time, and um, with enough people, you could uh, be asked to assist only uh, perhaps once every other month. Let us go forth into the world proclaiming the good news of God in Jesus Christ. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Thank you, God. Alleluia, alleluia. Hallelujah. 